Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do a real example. Here we have an, a problem where the spring constant is 800 newtons per meter. The mass of the object is 2 kilograms. The maximum displacement is equal to 10 centimeters. And we're supposed to find omega, the angular frequency, the frequency of oscillation, the period of oscillations, and the position as a function of time. And let's say in this case, uh, when time x equals question mark, when t equals, oh, let's call it 1.5 seconds. Doesn't matter what we call it, so that's a good, good choice right there. The equation that defines the motion is x as a function of time equals a, the maximum displacement, times the cosine of omega t, assuming that at t equals zero, we've pulled the block out here, kept it at its maximum displacement in the positive direction. At that moment, when t equals zero, we let go, and the motion begins. Let's find omega first. Omega is defined as the square root of k divided by m. In this case, we know that k is equal to 800 newtons per meter. The mass is equal to 2. That would be equal to the square root of 400. And the square root of 400 is equal to 20. That becomes 20 radians per second. So 20 radians per second. Now, radians is actually a non-unit, so we don't have to, to write radians, but I also prefer to write radians because otherwise they can get quite confusing. So in this case, omega, which is the angular frequency of motion, is equal to 20 radians per second. The next one we're going to find is the actual frequency, the frequency of oscillation. We know that f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. That's because we know that omega can be defined as 2 pi times f. So f is omega divided by 2 pi, which is 20 radians per second divided by 2 pi. This is equal to 20 radians per second. And then divide by 2 pi radians, 2 pi radians. So the radians units cancel out. And we're left with 20 per second. Oh, the radian units, not the 2 pi. Let me write that again. We've got to be careful here. That's 2 pi radians. The radians cancel out, but we still have the 2 pi there. So that's 10 divided by pi. 10 divided by pi equals, that's 3.18. F equals 3.18 oscillations, oscillations per second. And notice we wrote 3.18, there's two significant figures, we could write as 3.2, so let's just write as 3.2 oscillations per second, and that would be the oscillatory frequency or the number of oscillations per second, 3.2. The next thing we're going to try to find is the period, how long does it take for one oscillation to take place? We know that by definition, the period is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. That would be 1 divided by 3.18 if we keep three significant figures. So we take the inverse of that. And we get 0.314. Notice that this is 3.18 per second. And if we divide, if we have a 1 over second in the denominator, that moves, that moves the seconds into the numerator. So this is equal to... My calculator said 0 0.31, 0 0.31 seconds would be the time for a single oscillation. So T is the period, the time for a single oscillation. F is the frequency, the number of oscillations per second. Omega is the number of radians per second. And finally, we're supposed to find the position of that object, assuming again that we started out by pulling it off to the right, x equals a at time equals zero, we let go. Where is it at 1.5 seconds later? Notice that that could not be answered using the energy equation. You will need this equation right here. x when t equals 1.5 is equal to the amplitude, which is 10 centimeters. You don't have to convert to meters. You can keep that in centimeters, times the cosine of omega. Omega is 20 radians per second times the time, which is 1.5. That means we're trying to find the cosine of 30 radians, not 30 degrees. So you want to make sure that your calculator is converted to the radian mode. In my calculator, I have to push the mode button and 5. That puts it in the radian mode. I plug in the number 30, and I find the cosine of 30, which is 0 0.15, which is 0 0.154. And therefore, x when time is equal to 1.5 seconds is equal to this times that. That gives us... 1.5 centimeters, not seconds, but centimeters, 
as the final answer. That's where it will be at. The fact that this came out to be positive means that the block was 1.5 centimeters to the right of the equilibrium point at time equals 1.5 seconds. If it had been a negative number, which it could have been, this could have been a negative quantity, that means that the block would have been on the left side of the equilibrium point. And that's how it's done.